Hi, this is Sunny Wood for Be Inspired and the project for this week, because it's probably going to take me a few days, is a camel saddle. The lady has two of these. She's only given me one because the second one, the leather part has absolutely been destroyed. <clears throat> this one is on its way out. There's holes in various places. It's going to be an interesting project, just in case one of you has one of these at home. Let's get on with it. The client has given me this fabric. It's a woven fabric and it's got pressed on backing. It's a bit unusual but it's workable. It's all shaped. It has a zip here and inside is full of straw. She doesn't want the cover back so I'm going to take the cover to pieces. I think the best thing to do is just start working on taking that to pieces and then get rid of the straw all in one go. Because it's so compressed it's not going to come out easily. As I'm using this as a template, I'm just going to cut down. It won't matter. I can't keep any of this. It's just old and perished. Not really what I want. I'll do the same on this side. I'll try not to tear it. I really don't like tearing things. I don't know how long she's had these. We live in Houston, so the air in the house can be very dry with the AC. If you don't take care of leather, it will eventually dry out. I'm almost down on this side. Gosh, that's not what I wanted. It's just tearing. I'm trying to get these stitches rather than tearing the leather. So now I'm going to just carry on around the bottom and I will remove everything from here. I'm going to just remove this. I figured if I take it all off, I'm not having to pull any of it out. Something quite interesting is this is a really thin leather. It's certainly thinner than cowhide. It's a bit papery in places. I think it's going to fit in here. Having removed that, I'll start there because it's a nice open space. Again, I'm going to work around the stitches. Now what's quite interesting is they have actually put a trim on, like piping, but it doesn't feel like anything's in there. No, this isn't even leather, this part. It's a leather look for the band and for the trim. That cuts down how much leather you're putting into a project. The band was put on to the top before the side was. Just realised they have just folded this over. There we go. That will come off a lot easier. It'll take me a little while to get all of this off. And then we've got the parts to make the new pattern with. This is the top of that footstool. I'm just going to lay it out flat. This is going to be a bit awkward because it's obviously taken on the shape that it was pulled into. As you see, this is quite misshapen. Boy, 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 how to do this. If I measure from one end to the other, very slightly pull it out. It comes to 27 and a half inches on that side. And when I say very slightly, I'm not pulling it too much. And it's just 27 and a quarter on this side. So I'm thinking if I make it 27 and a half length, I will be losing some of it in the seams, but it's better to be a little bit over the top than under. So I'm going to just cut in a straight line 27 and a half inches up, my usual way. And now I need two cutouts. And I suppose I ought to work out what the width is at the widest point. So here again, I'm not going to pull it too much. I'm just going to flatten it. And there, pull that seam out there and there. That's 17 and 3 quarters on that side. It seems to go in here, so I'm going to have to remember to do that. And then again here, it is 17 and a quarter. Now I do slightly wider seams, so I'm going to make that 17 and a half. That should give me the extra that I usually use. So two blocks out. I'll measure this one 17 and a half. Fold that in half that way. Put the selvages together like that and just flatten it out. And then I'm going to cut along the fold like this. But I'm only going to do one side at a time. And then I can use this one to cut round because it's already where I need it to be. Cut there. Fold it along the selvage again so it's nice and even. And cut my second piece out. I've cut it slightly over so I can make any alterations I need to it, but it's close enough that it shouldn't be too much wasted. That's those two pieces. Theoretically, all of this should be the same size. Doesn't mean to say it is. So I'll just pop that on there and have a look. That and that are the same size and they should be matching this way too. So I would have to cut four matching pieces out. Let's have a look and see which one looks the best. This one's got a tear in it. This one's got a tear in it. This one doesn't have a tear in it. So I'm going to cut this piece out 
and use these two pieces. Now something I have noticed with these patches here, it covers up the fact that these pieces are just cut straight down and don't have a seam on them. When I make this I will be putting a seam on because I need to fold the fabric over. That's something I do need to take into consideration when I'm putting it back together. I have to manage to get four pieces out, all facing the right way to make pairs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this one out here. All the dust will drop off as I go. I'm going to make sure that this line is as straight as I can on the grain, like that. I can bring it back here a little bit because there's enough room here. Unfortunately, the lines on the fabric aren't very straight, so I'm just gonna have to keep it as straight as I can. I am going to cut out, leaving half an inch for seam allowances. So I'm gonna pop that out there and cut. Now fortunately for me, I kind of know where half an inch is. I'll just bring that out slightly to there. This is a very generous half inch, so I'm actually going to cut across like that and a little bit further because I need to make sure that I have half an inch along here. I'm going to cut all the way along here. It's going to be generous in places, but that'd be okay. I can make marks on here. I'm going to leave this here, although I will be cutting it at a slight angle. And again here, this is a little bit generous for my liking, so I'm going to cut a little bit of the leather off as I go and on round. Here's my first piece. I need four facing the same way and then four being upside down. I'm going to cut this one out up here and then round. I'll probably have to make some alterations because obviously the leather is a different kind of fabric to this. It's stiffer. It's also been pulled out of shape. I've got two on that one and two for this one. And now I'm going to flip them over. One there and then one here and then I'll cut the other pair out. Now I have both sides of one half and I will continue cutting until I have everything that I need. The more I look at this, the more it doesn't make sense. I think it's arced, which would make sense, but it's quite twisted. So I am going to make a tracing of the shape I want and then use this to fill in the difference. Because I'm absolutely not sure what it is I'm meant to be doing, I'm going to do a line like that. That is the shape that the side border has to be cut at. I'll go a little bit further because when it gets here, it starts curving around the other way and goes down and across and back up. I'm not sure if I can get that. Sometimes you just have to be a little bit more creative. So we'll just go all the way down. Average for all the sides is seven inches from the inside of this groove all the way down. And now I am going to measure this way. Now this says three and a half to the back end, uh, just under three and a half. Oh, it's slightly more on that side. That's weird. And then across here, five, five. And maybe it's less than that. Maybe it's just four and four. If I bring it up higher, it's just four inches. I'm coming over slightly like that. Pin it into place first. I'm measuring along the band between the stitching and it comes to one inch, one eighth as the average. But I need half an inch allowance on both sides. So I'm going to just cut down. Putting the curve in is very important. Once I've got one cut out, I can cut the others out. Cut it as smoothly as you can. Cut over slightly because you're going to need to have seam allowances on both ends. Remove. And taking from the top here, I'm going to cut this two and one eighth because that allows me my half inches for the seam allowance either side. Take your time. When you've got one cut out, place it down and make the pair. Pat it out. If you're not sure, just pat it out and then cut. Just remember you need two for each cushion that you're putting in. I actually decided to cut an inner cover out in lining fabric. I've decided to fold this in half and you can see this side, the underside, or one side I should say, is narrower 
than the other. If I put both ends together like this, it's odd in here as well. I'm just going to make a nick here for that half, line that up and make another nick here. That is my halfway mark. And I'm also going to take it on the wider side. I can lose width, I can't gain width. Fold my lining fabric in half and place the cover that I'm copying on top. So the nick here is going to go on fold there and the nick on that side is going to go on fold there. I think that's twisted. Oh well, it's not much I can do about this. This is whatever it's going to be. I'm going to make sure that those wide points are on the outside of the lining fabric. Holding it steady, I'm going to just cut round, allowing quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. I'm going to cut in here at an angle and across. This is wrinkled, so I'm just going to cut straight to the other side and allow for that wrinkling. I think I prefer this side to this side. This side's slightly wonky. And then I'm going to come in here. Also allowing my seam allowance. Pull that off. Oh gosh, this is so grubby. Nobody's ever going to see because it's underneath. Place that like that. This lines up quite nicely there. And I'm going to cut the other side all the way around. Then in here at an angle and round it off. I'm going to cut another one out of lining. And then I'm going to cut the two tops to match using this as a pattern. Line it up. I'm cutting the first set out. When I say set, that's going to be the top and the bottom of the inside and outside portions of the footstool. Here's the inside and the outside of the first set. And then I'll put all the other pieces that I've cut together with it. I need to cut the foam. This is a firm foam, which I'm going to put inside. First of all, I am going to stab some pins in it so it's not walking anywhere. I'm using the lining fabric as a template. I'm going to put several pins in well inside the exterior there. Nice thing about upholstery is you can put pins in and nobody squeaks. I started off in dressmaking. People complain if you stick a pin in there. And I want to take the cover back a good inch. So I'm going to measure from the outside of the cover in like that. It's going to be like dot to dot because all I'm going to do is fold it back and then put a mark until I have a curve. And when I say dot to dot, all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from one strip to another until I've gone all the way around. I think an inch in from the edge is exactly what I want. I'm going to try one and then if I don't like it, I will do the second one an inch and a half. This is a trial and error. I've never done one of these before, but I don't believe in not doing it just because you've never done something. Join them up. I'm going to work my way around until I have my whole pattern. The reason I'm taking it in an inch, I think that's going to give me enough difference for the outside to fold over the top and for it to be rigid enough to hold in the cradle of the saddle. It's going to take a little minute to get all the way around. For the ends, I'm going to draw that in for now because trying to pull it all back and measure it is going to be a little bit Awkward. To cut foam you need a serrated knife. Usually I use an electric carving knife. All I'm going to do is keep it as flat on as I can. Now this I'm going to cut back anyway so I'm not that bothered. Keeping the foam on the edge of a firm surface cut through. Keep the knife perpendicular and just cut on the down. Keep the knife as even as you possibly can as you work around your shape. By keeping the knife perpendicular and the edge of your foam as close to the edge of a flat surface, you usually have a nice-ish edge. Work your way around your project. So I put the saddle up. I'm going to try it out. This is the size I had made it. Too wide for it to fit in here. And then it pushes it up and it's too long to fit on there. I'm going to make adjustments to these parts and then try again. So try two. See how this goes. This is really weird because it goes right down in the center. So I've got to support the center so it doesn't do that so much. There'll be other foam that comes over slightly and filler. So I'm not going to worry that it's coming up short here. It should work. I might take it in just a little bit more across here, maybe half an inch, and that should give it the extra that it needs because it's pushing in here. I'm glad I didn't make the cover up before I've done this. I've taken a little bit more off the inside here. I think it pushes out a little bit more. As long as it comes to the front here, I think I'll be fine. I showed you how to use a carving knife or a bread knife, but I prefer to use this. And all I'm going to do is hold the knife perpendicular, keep the wires out of the way. Again, the foam is 
on a surface and here's my cut line but the back of the counter is about there. I just cut in. Once I've started it off, push that aside and I'm going to start working my way around. If this was a straight side, I would hold my knife like that, but it isn't, so I'm going to do this. Actually, it's better if you lower it. And then you can twist the foam as you go until you get all the way around. Because it's not wide enough, I'm just going to measure an inch and a quarter, the same along the bottom here. If it's wrong, I'll alter it in a minute. Nothing about this has turned out the way I thought it was. And that's fine. You'll get jobs like that that you work on and it just doesn't make sense. I'm just going to cut this out. Now I'll do the same on the other side. As soon as I've used both methods, this smooth one with the horizontal lines is from the electric knife. And this one with the up and down and stringy pieces is from the carving knife. So I'm now going to just check on here. They're about the right size. By the time they're wrapped, they'll be equal. This is a one inch super soft foam that I'm going to put on the top. Here, I'm going to measure back an inch from the edge. I need it to go slightly over the top of the foam to give it a rounded look. But that is why I'm having it two different sizes. I'm going to just mark this out just like I did before, folding the cover back to my inch mark and then putting a line down. And then when I've got them, I'm going to line them up really easy. I've got two of these to do. I could do it on paper and draw around, but it's not like I'm doing a pattern here that I use regularly. So the nice thing about the one inch foam is you can use a pair of scissors so I am going to just cut round like this okay so I have a problem and that is this having cut all of this to be the size of the original this is not going to work the cutout is a lot different having worked out that this is the allowance that I need to go round the front and the back of the saddle this is obviously going to be too narrow so I am going to mark one and quarter inches on the three sides like that on the top and again on the bottom now the bottom might need to be made bigger I don't know yet until I've got this sewn up I don't know what alterations I need to make so because I've got two of these to do I'll make the alterations on one and then make the alterations on the other upholstery is not always straightforward sometimes I upset customers because I take a bit longer than they feel is the appropriate amount of time but just because you take half the time doesn't mean to say you get good results so never rush anything to take half the time means you do half the quality of work so don't get into that habit on the top cover I'm going to mark the halfway mark on each side like that and then on the side pieces I have put the same here on the top and the bottom having cut this back I'm going to sew down here on stitch number 3.5 I'm going to do about two to three inches forward and back at the beginning and then forward and back again also going to do the same on this side forward and back forward and back open that one up like that open this one up the right sides are together here again forward and back two to three inches that side flip it over I usually start on the outsides because then I know that the outside seams are even when I'm sewing them now I can start putting the side on. This is the base and I've just sewn on all four joins. I have the base and it's all open at the moment. This is the side. I'm going to put the bottom curve on a foot width in from the outside edge. I'm going to allow this to follow on up. I'm not stretching either fabric. I don't need to. Once it starts going around the corner, I think I'm going to leave it. I've probably got about five centimeters or three inches left over from here. Flip it, go back a few stitches, and then start again. And this time I'm pulling this, this around into place. I'm not actually pulling it tight, I'm just letting it roll itself into place. And the same. On this side, I'm going to stop sewing about three inches from the end. And repeat with the lower curve on this side, exactly the same way. Once I've got the bottom in, I'm going to put the top in. Pop the top down, line up the centers, 
start just off the center it doesn't have to be that close and then sew the two pieces together and I'm doing the lining first because if I have cut anything out wrong I can alter it on the top cover once I know what it is from the bottom cover here and see where I've stopped sewing there I'm going to fold that back so that's in line and finger press it like that I'm going to just sew to that pressed mark and then it should be nice and even and reverse as I did on the other side flip it again sew this into place fold that back underneath finger press it into place and I'm going to finish sewing at that mark as so that when I add to the front and the back of this that I have a good starting point and it's even on both sides that's one side put that underneath like that pull the side out line up the center marks again and sew into place just pulled the cover over the foam and yes it's baggy what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue the front and the back this width apart and then really pull it in tight see how it looks then I have the top I need to know is if there's anything really different about them it looks like the bottom is actually slightly longer than the top and it also goes in at an angle so the top piece has to be slightly curved to allow for all of this difference so I've got the curve from the other cushion that I'm meant to be making or will be making and I put the center marks in like that and I'm going to start in the center it's the same width but it goes down slightly I'm going to start here on the bottom with the bottom curve and sew that into place and work my way around sometimes you work on things and it just will not go in there's no point in getting upset it's just one of those things so to the corner here I'm going to pull this back and in line. Before I get to the corner, I'll just cut in there and then allow that to swing into place. Now I'm gonna sew the other side in and then I'll do the top. Pull this one open to it. That's because it's an inside fold, not an outside one. Twist this in place and sew on round. I'm going to join the centers together here and hope that I have the answer this time. I just have to remember this is the inside. This is the one that I practice on to get right and make the alterations for the outside. Now I'm going to pop this side in. There we go. Sometimes it needs help. Those two are on top of each other where they need to be. That's taken in the added allowance from here. Perfect, and I've got one completed. Fold along where that corner is, down, make sure it's even, and pull that to the corner. Do that both sides, work from the center out, and you will find, as I did, that the corners line up quite nicely. That's actually in line. Now I'll do the other side. And again, on this corner here, fold it across, and then that will pull in here. The band you need to pull in slightly so that everything lines up. If it's slightly out, it really doesn't matter. That's why you need to make undercovers sometimes, because that's where you iron out all your problems. And there again, it's in line. I've inserted a straight piece here. I think it's going to work because the fabric is meant to twist up. If it was meant to be straight, it wouldn't work at all. I think I've got it this time. So I'm going to put a little square on each corner and it will vary for each one of you. So where you think it's going to be even top and bottom, pull back your fabrics. Make sure that it's even here and here and work out how much you need to put in. It's just like a normal join. So you fold your fabric back. And the reason it looks funky is because then you're putting a flat surface on a bias. That would do that one. And then that would do that one. I think I'm gonna have to pull back on here. This is the piece I cut off originally. Lay that on and cut. Here's the piece that I cut from the side. Lay that on top and cut up. Because I center everything, I know how long all the pieces are going to be so it's always a good thing. I'm going to use this as my guideline on how far that has to be. So pop that in like that, cut it and then sew that into place. Right sides together both sides. When you've sewn your patch in pop it back underneath and just pull it in as you sew it. It might wobble a little bit because it's doing its own thing. And then on the underside or the top side do it again. Roll it in as you go. 
it's not too important with the liner because when you put the new cover on I'll make sure all of these alterations are on the side so it will go in a lot smoother. The construction of the main part of this is the super soft foam underneath the firm foam. You could probably use medium density but it's a total of three inches in the center there. I am using a finer Dacron because I don't want it to be too bulky. I'm going to sew this in running stitches along the base. When I pull it in, it just gives a little bit of the shaping. Pull it in tight. I'm doing nice big homeward bounders as far up as I can. It has to be within the two cutouts and then just finish it off. The ends, I'm going to cut back and around on both sides. I will repeat this on the other end of this cushion. And I'm also going to cut in like that on both sides. So that folds down and that folds down like that. Having brought that into position, cut it back so that it goes over the top of the piece that I've just cut. Cut that a little bit shy, but that's fine. And then I will just sew this into position. I'm going to put little pleats underneath and backstitch slightly to hold everything. Once it's in its cover, this doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm just putting it in to hold everything into place for now. Make sure it's as smooth as you can on the outside edge. Pull that in like that. This is going on the underside of the cushion, so if there's any discrepancies, it's gonna be hidden by the base of the saddle. But there's also extra padding going in, so it's not gonna be showing anyway. Where it's centered there, I'm also going to go across, fold that over, and I'm also gonna sew that into position. I folded it over so if there's a little gap between the wood and this cushion it should fill it with those little pieces when I put it in I'm just going to pull that up that'll be fine and now I'm going to cut the same as I did on the other side pull this into position fold that over make that into a slightly sharper angle and just go straight across once this end is pulled in I'll do the other end to match before I do the last part what I've done is I've packed the ends with some extra loose packing on both sides as well as all the way on here because it wasn't very smooth so I put the packing here and when I pull all of this in it should give a really smooth line. The advantage of having it in the inner cover is when I come to put the next cover on if there's anything that needs to be repacked I can do it. Next thing to do is to sew these up which is a little ladder stitch. I'm only going to do sections so I'm going to do this one first. I'm able to pull that across like that and secure it. Come down here a little way and then a stitch either side like this between quarter and half a centimeter but certainly round about quarter of an inch and then pull. This has to be secured all the way up. Because it's only a foot width apart that I did the seam that's all I'm going to do on this. On the outer cover I will make the seam a little bit wider because I need to bring it all in. The reason I'm putting my fingers underneath at the back here is because I don't want it getting caught on any of the fluff that might inhibit it moving around. Because I'm doing it this way and it's not that tight, I don't have to put a piece of fabric underneath like I usually do. Once I've done one side, I'll seal it off and then I'll do the other three sides. As I look at this, it's a little bit wrinkly here. I can't have that on the top. It's gone in slightly better on various ones. So that tells me that from here to about here is even. I have a side piece here, so if I rest that on the center like that, put a pin in it to hold it, and it's only just about in the center. Bring this one out to here. That is the beginning of the wrinkling. Put a pin here, and because this is the worst side, I'm gonna take the pins from the worst side. As I turn it, I can see that this seems to just carry on going up. Get a second one and lay it on top like that. That goes all the way around, which would mean I have to have a join on a corner. I hate having joins on corners. I think what I'm gonna to have to do is just extend these a good few inches. So I'm gonna to have to work out how much longer I need these to be. Pop a pin there for now fold along that line there so I can determine how long that center piece on each side has to be. That's the main length and then I've got to decide how much around the corner I'm going to go. If I measure from the corner here and I'm going to go over about an inch for now all the way around to the other side. That's 35. I've just folded the remaining fabric in half and I've pinned the side piece on make sure it's even top and bottom. Half of 36 is 18 so I'm also going to put that there 
I'm going to pin to here. I'm going to put a pin mark here because that's why I need to stop this. I have to have this curving up to at least here and then I'm going to carry it on but I'm going to flatten it out slightly to here. I think that's the way I want to go. Technically it continues up but because there's a curve it might not actually do that. I'll cut one side and then the other. That's at the base of there and I'm going to carry on going but I'm going to kind of up and even out like that. I'm going to do the same on this side. I need to even it out because the curvature as it goes around the corner might not be that much. Straight up here. I'm going to cut the other side with this. I'm just going to put it the other way which allows me to have the fabrics still in a tram line. Pop that one here. Line that up. It looks quite even and although it still comes up it evens out. I think that's going to work. So I'm going to cut four like this. I had to adjust the cutout before but I'm not going to do a huge amount I'm going to cut it back an inch because originally I did an inch and a half back if I do it a whole inch and a half I lose my seam allowance and I want it to be a little bit fuller if I have to add filler then I can let's make sure that is an inch having told you it's going to be an inch take that back there the other thing I'm going to do is this needs to be straight and not at that angle I am going to cut down on one in a straight line I'm only doing it to one and now I'm going to do it to the other side make sure it matches now I've done this side fold it over now this looks like it goes in adjust to the top take it in just a wee tad on that side there and the same on this side just a little bit I think it might be an optical illusion because of the way this comes out it just makes that look like it's going in I'm going to use this for the pattern on the other top the other thing to do is make sure you stay stitch all the way around both sides again I'm only going to be taking an inch off from the underneath if this is slightly oversized it's not going to be a major problem because it's all soft interior it's got a little bit more give in it this one's going to be awkward and again straight down and across I'm going to do that on all pairs what you need to do is put it on the longest stitch and stay stitch just like you do in dressmaking both sides of all the side pieces and kind of push the fabric to it so that you're not stretching fabric out of shape. I usually do this a foot width. When I say foot width, it's from the center to the edge of the foot, away from the outside edge. When you've done one side, flip it and do the other side. I think that will stop the bubbling on the side of the cushions. When you've recut the bottom of the cushion cover, pop the cover underneath, allowing the half inch seam allowance, forge and reverse, and go to about four inches, which is about seven centimeters, and reverse. Do that on all four sides, and then stay stitch. When you stay stitch, stay stitch the seam open. On here, you want it to look as flat as possible. I have the outside curve on the bottom like this. Line the center mark up with the center seam and pin. I'm going to be sewing this from the top. So I'm going to work my way back to the start of here. I'm not pulling it, I'm just holding it into position to about there before it goes around the corner. As it goes around the corner, pull it out so it goes in square on. I'm going to measure from here to five inches across. That's to start off with, pop this in here at my five inch mark, about 13 centimeters. So from here down two inches or five centimeters, I'll start sewing. I'll do that with all pieces. I want them in first. I'm going to start here, take that one out. I'm going to give it a half inch seam allowance, pull that into shape and start sewing. Remove the pins as you go. That's so that the fabric can move itself into place because I've got curves going in opposite directions so everything must be able to move. I'm also sewing like I usually do the top or bottom of the cushion onto the border. I think I'll get a better look that way. The nice thing is if you've pre-pinned it when you come to the center the center will still be in the center. And I'm going to finish sewing a total of seven inches from the top. So I'll put a pin on that side. This should flow in quite well. Ease that in to shape as you get there. I'm lifting this up to fit in. 
and I will reverse but only a couple of stitches just to hold it. I'm going to work all four sides in of the bottom like that. I think working the bottom in because it's bigger is the better of the two options. Again with the ends I've put the center mark in which I'm lining on the bottom first. Open the seam and pin it. Take it to the corner split that just slightly about quarter of an inch in so you can straighten that out. Pin it both sides of that split so there's one there and in here. Take it to the top, pin it and in this case cut back about quarter of an inch at a 45 degree angle and allow that to come round the side and into place. I'm going to leave those two open for now. That might go down there and that might join in there. I'm not sure. I'll work it out in a minute. Then again, I'm going to start sewing four inches in from that end. So I'm going to line that up like that. Half inch seam allowance. This one I'm going to pull out so that it comes in as a straight line. Now this might walk slightly. Come in to my half inch mark, which I think is there. Pick it up, twist everything. And this is why you undo that, because you want everything to go in evenly. Now this looks a little bit big, but that's probably because it's going to be taken in here in a minute. So pop that down. So into here with the half inch seam allowance. I can open that just a little bit wider, but not by very much. I don't want to lose the stitches anywhere. Straight over there. Because it's a corner, I'm gonna reverse. Drop the needle down, wriggle everything into position, pop the foot back down, remove that pin, and sew into the center. I'm not gonna put a V on there. What I'm going to do is open that up like that sew on through. Here again I'm going to just open that up by about a quarter of an inch so that will pull out. Because this has a curve to it it behaves slightly differently so just allow the curve to go almost to the end. Put the 45 degree angle on there about a quarter of an inch. Sew to the end of your half inch. Lift the foot up and turn everything into position and sew about four inches. I'm just going to go back and over sew in that corner because I want to make sure that is secure. When you do this, pull the fabric out like that, fan it out. Nice and secure. Do the same on the other ends and then I've got basically the bottom finish. I'm going to line up center side there and I'm going to do exactly the same. Keep the border down and pin into position and sew in just like I have. The only difference I'm going to do here is corners have to be in line top and bottom so you're going to have to adjust those to match and pin those specifically and then go around the four inches to your start point but those have to be in line and start sewing everything into position you want everything to be corresponding and even before you sew it all in again on the ends sew in from about seven inches. It might vary top and bottom because the top is slightly smaller than the bottom because of the way it, it curves. Now I've got to get the end in. I'm going to fold that across. Where it comes in here is where I need my line to line up for the turn. Put a pin in that way. I better put my halfway mark in here. That's very important. And then on the other side, the same thing. I'm going to roll that back that is the corner. As long as these two raw edges are in line, that's all that matters. Put another pin in to mark it. Now I'm going to measure back. I'm going to hold on to there. Where that crosses, doesn't look very obvious, but this is about half an inch in from that corner there. I'm going to pop the pin all the way through. And then measure back about four inches. And this fabric is tilting. Should do there. Pop that underneath my half inch mark and sew to this corner here where my first pin is. Sew to the pin, needle down, foot up, pull the pin out, cut in at a 45 degree angle only at the bottom, quarter of an inch in. Twist the fabric underneath like this, make sure it's nice and even, pop it down. I am aiming for that to line up and as you can see this is a little bit givey. So I'm going to pin my center mark like that. I'm actually going to cut this slightly, about a quarter of an inch. And then pulling on the bottom fabric, I'm going to sew all of this into position. I'm pushing the fabric to the raw edge of the 
border as I go. I'm also pushing it up a little bit. When I get here, I'm going to open that corner out as best I can so it's flat on the surface like that and sew that in. Reverse, straighten that out as if I was going to go all the way around. Needle down, foot up, swing everything into position. That means pulling the border back like that and into position. Make sure that the center of the top cushion and the center of the border for the end are in line. Pop the foot down and pull slightly on the bottom fabric because you want the bottom and the top to be equal and it's only just slightly out of line. As you get into the corner where it goes around the side of the pommel on the saddle, straighten that out. Pinch it into place, reverse on the corner because that's hard wearing and then pull on as you sew to the centre marks. When you get to the centre, remove your pin. Here's the corner on the border. Line that up to your half inch mark here and pin it into place. That's as you turn to go around the front side of the end. Pin that there and I know when to turn again. Give slightly there. I am going to give that a little bit of a clip, but not very much of one. Again, line everything up and sew from the center, pulling slightly on the band, not on the top. As I get to the turning on the inside there, pull all the fabric out so it goes in as evenly as possible. You really don't want any creases there. And then on up to the top, still pulling the border fabric. As I get to the top, sew to your pin, needle down foot up, remove pin, cut in at a 45 degree angle, about a quarter of an inch towards the needle, and then swing everything into position. So that often means pulling the fabric out on the border so you don't have any folds. And then sew about four inches, allowing the curves to do their thing. There we are. I think that's about four inches. So I'm going to do this on the second one, so I'm where I need to be. So what I've done is sewn that in, top and bottom. For the top, because I really want the top to look nice and neat, I am going to halve the distance between where I stop and start. Put a pin there. Move that fabric in, I'm not stretching it, until it meets that pin. And I'm going to put a mark going down on there too. And the same with here. I'm just going to roll it in like that and mark it. So that too is marked on the fold. That is my seam line for those two. If I push those in, they'll, they'll meet. I'm going to flip it and I'm going to see how that lines up. I'm going to do the bottom half, pin that into place here. Line that up so it's nice and even with that. Usually I have the raw edges, but the raw edges turn, so I can't rely on that as a decent way of measuring this. Put that in and pin. Now the same here. I'm going to pin this one into here as if I've got a seam going on. And with this also, I'm just going to roll that in and there is my seam line. I'm going to see how well that looks on the back. I think I like that. There's my fold line. It's not really wrinkled on the back. It seems to go in quite nicely. And I'm going to pin that too, just like that. Double check the way it looks from here, across and over. Not only that, it does almost line up. So the angle is even on the border. Now sew those in. Then I can take these pieces off and use them as a guide for all the other areas. Because once one's in, the rest will go in because I've done it evenly. Before I take my pins out, I'm going to put a little nick on that side and again on this side. It's literally maybe an eighth, quarter of a centimetre and the same on all four pin marks. With pins out, all of them. Line your marks up like that, pull the fabric back and you're literally going to be sewing from one set of marks to the other. I'm going to pin that in place so I can actually see it. The light in here is really bad today. I'm going to start sewing at the mark at the top, work from top to bottom. And here's the join. Straighten that out, little forward and back at the top, all the way down, and a tiny forward and back. Before I sew it in, double check. That's got a nice rounded look there and a nice rounded look there. So all I'm going to do now is cut back to about half an inch of there. Open the seam up, pop it underneath. Pop that a little ways back from where I stopped sewing earlier. Keep my half inch seam allowance. Make sure my seam is open and sew into place. 
because everything's curved you do need to give it a little bit of assistance to get it to go in straight but not much looks pretty neat maybe a little bit of bubbling there but I think that'd be okay again pop this underneath back from where I stopped sewing pull this up and into place like that and so make sure the seam is open and then finish over your stitches and look I think that went in quite well that carries on going up like I felt it needed to but without being too bulky in the corner there turn it the right way around find your seam and on this side it looks even I think I'm quite pleased with that I'll do the other three joints the same way. Only this time, what I can do, pop that onto there and just cut it back. And the same with this, pop that on there, cut that back and give myself my half inch allowance and that will work just as well. I would cut back slightly on the corners, but not too close. Only so there's not quite so much fabric going in. Like you would on dressmaking, going around a collar or something, just cut it back a little bit on the top and the bottom of the corners. Next thing to do is to push all the fabric through. Now I would suggest that you nick in on all of this, but you shouldn't need to because the seams should naturally go into the center of the border. And you can see I've only got one seam on each of these. It looks quite neat. I'm hoping I haven't made the insert too big and fat, especially as I've cinched the outer cover in slightly. It curves down, so I want the backs to match. Easy to remember because I've already sewn the backs in. Ease one side on, make sure that's all the way in there, and then push the other side in. Now with this one, you fold it in half like you do usually. Push it up like that, and my stitches are trying to give. That was a stitch going, which is on the cover. And that's why when you start sewing these things, you always go back a few stitches to make them stronger, just in case that happens. I'm now gonna force all of this in, and the same on that side. It just takes a little bit of working. Because I didn't cut this as far back as I had originally, it should all go in quite nicely. That's good. That looks pretty tight, actually. I think that's gonna work. See, it's already holding that shape. You just need a little bit of filler here and here on those corners, which I thought I would. And I think by pulling all of this in and working it, those will come out nice and even. That will pull in when I fill there, working the fabric into the center from both ends. I am pleased with this. I just hope she is. The next part is I have to fold this over half an inch and then over the fabric there, half an inch. I'm going to pin it only through the top fabric. I'm not going through the bottom because here again I really want to be able to maneuver the fabric if need be until I get to the top. I'm going to hand sew that shut just like I did on the underside and I can maneuver it like that and push it where it needs to be. I'm going to do both seams this way and then I'm going to go across half an inch raw edges to raw edges and into place. Now this has a slight shaping so it's not going to go in absolutely flat. It, there will be a little bit of an angle, but not much. It had to give a little bit of give underneath for the shaping that it is trying to go into. I filled up these pieces so they look nice and plump. Not as well as they were originally, but they'll be fine. It's not like anybody sits on these pieces. They put their butt here or their feet on here. So this is just to hold it in place. Thank you for joining me on this project. This has been quite tricky, mainly because you need to build the structure of the saddle before you put the cover on. So I think it took me about, I think it was three tries before I got the style and how I wanted it, which I'm thinking is the bits that I actually caught on camera. I'll edit together and explain why I did things the way I did. And hopefully, if you ever have a camel saddle to upholster or replace, I will have given you the best ideas that I can possibly have thought of myself. If you'd like to hear more from me, please subscribe, hit the bell button, and a few thumbs up would be absolutely brilliant. And then I know how I'm getting on. In the meantime, take care. See you later. Ciao.